is a video on setting your path environment variable so that your OS, your operating system, recognizes Python. This is for the Mac or Linux. Now you probably know the Mac is uh, actually running Unix under the hood, so uh, the instructions will be the same for either operating system because both are running a, a flavor of Unix. Uh, now, the reason we're doing this is so that we can open up any terminal window and have Python uh, at the ready from the command line. In other words, we want to be able to do this. Type Python and then space and then dash capital V and have it show us a version of Python that's relatively late. It needs to be uh, Python 3.8 or greater. Uh, and uh, if we were to, let's say, start a Python session, uh, import sys and then print sys.executable, we would see a path that indicates where Python lives. And this is the essence of what we're trying to do. Now, if you go ahead and open up a terminal window and are able to perform uh, the commands successfully the way I have here, uh, then you don't need to go any further with this, although it may benefit you to learn how to set environment variables uh, on your Mac or Linux operating system. What we want to do is, is uh, first identify what uh, shell we're running. Now the shell uh, is uh, basically the program that you're talking to when you're at the command line. And the um, uh, uh, there, there are two parts to your operating system in the Unix world. One is called the shell and the other is called the kernel. The kernel is the inner workings. The shell is the outer presentation, meaning this prompt and any errors that we might see. Uh, so, for example, if I try to find something that doesn't exist and the OS comes back and says command not found, um, that message was produced by the shell. Now, actually, this gives us a relatively easy way uh, to see um, uh, uh, what operating system we're using because I notice that if I t do type something uh, unrecognizable uh, or unfamiliar to the operating system, uh, the shell responds with ZSH. Now, I believe if we were on the Bash operating system, which is the other op uh, operating system, that we would see uh, bash. So we could probably take that as our cue. Z shell is marked with the percent sign prompt. And this is clearly telling us that we're running Z shell because that's what ZSH stands for. Uh, and the bash prompt should be um, marked with a dollar sign. And I'm just gonna do an experiment on my other computer, which is running, um, which is running bash. Uh, and see if it says bash to me because I, I can't demo that for you right here but let's just type something yeah sure enough if I if I uh, if I if I type this uh, unrecognized command here I get a message for command not found from bash so uh, and it says bash so that's enough for us to know which one we're running now the reason we want to know which shell we are running, which are really just flavors of each other, they more or less do the same thing, uh, is that we need to edit the correct file for setting our uh, uh, environment variable, the path environment variable. So what I'm gonna do is open up a finder window. The finder window opens up, right now it opened to my desktop, I'm gonna need to go to my home directory, make sure to click on the home. And then we need to look for a hidden file. Now, the hidden file is so-called because you can't see it here. But if I use the special command, command shift period, it will show me hidden files. So with the command shift period, uh, I see a bunch of files that uh, are now listed here and that are, as you can see, grayed out. This is also emphasizing that they are hidden. If I look very closely, I notice that there is a file here called dot bash profile. And if I scroll all the way to the bottom, I see that there's a hidden file or not to the bottom because I see the hidden files come first, at least on my system. 
um, that, uh, that there's another file called zshrc. I guess where it appears will probably depend on uh, how you're sorting. So if I, soar, um, if I sort uh, alphabetically, it looks like the hidden files do mostly come in first. I'm not sure why there are some couple of grayed out files here, but anyway, it doesn't even matter. As long as you can find it, you're going to be looking for, um, in the case of Z shell, you'll be looking for ZSHRC. And in the case of bash, you're going to be editing the bash profile. And we want to edit these files. So now what you can do, I think, is double click. And uh, hopefully the operating system will open up in a text editor. I'm going to go ahead and do what happens default on uh, the Mac, which is uh, it opens up text edit. And I see this file here. This is a plain text file. And it contains a lot of things that I put in here. Now, there's an awful lot that you can learn about the operating system. And I think you can learn it pretty quickly. But we don't really have the time to go into uh, some of the details of this sort of file uh, at the present. Um, but what we're going to do is look for the path environment variable and edit or add to the path environment variable. Now, one side note, you may not be able to find the ZHRC or the or the ZS, ZSHRC or the bash profile file. And if that's the case, you would want to create it. Uh, now, I believe you would be able to create a hidden file. Whoops by, um, let's say, creating a new file. And I'll say this is hidden. And now let's see if I can save this in my home directory with a period. And I'll call this uh, David with a period in front of it. Putting the period in front of it makes it a hidden file. So let's call it uh, .david.txt. And it will give me a warning, but uh, I will uh, uh, and it tells me that it will be hidden, um, but I'm going to say go ahead. And then if I look here, I will find that sure enough, dot David uh, was created and it is a hidden file. I'm going to go ahead and, and exit here and then I'll just delete this file. But as I say, if this file doesn't exist, then go ahead and create it. But make sure you're in your home directory. Okay, you know, it won't hurt to create the file some other way, but it won't be effective. Okay, so I've got my open uh, ZSHRC, and you've hopefully got your open uh, or brand new bash profile or ZSHRC, depending on which. And I'm going to look for the path variable now. Now, I find it all over the place. So what I really want to do is find the very last men mention of it. There's actually the word uh, path. Um, there's oops. There is also the word path uh, in, a, in a different environment variable called Python path. And I see I've got a bunch of junk here, which I hate to delete anything. So I leave a bunch of junk in here. You can see that everything that's commented out here is old or unused. Now, what I really want to do is find the very last mention of path and I'll tell you why this is all commented out so I'm going to keep going here um, the reason I want the very last mention of the path environment variable is that uh, the, the last one mentioned will take precedence and it looks like this is it this is the only place I've got two places that I'm mentioning path here um, and uh, um, and I see that it's it's being mentioned twice now. Why are why aren't these um, why aren't these consolidated? Why don't I have both these mentions in one place? Uh, it doesn't really matter. I think I just found it more convenient to mention it in a second place. But if you look closely, you can see that it says export path equals, and then it says path and the rest of this path. This is actually incorrect. This is not what we want to do. What we want to do is take the path to our Python and put it first in the export command and then put the rest of the path afterwards. This is what this says. It says, please export this variable path and make it the value of 
this path and then colon and then the previous value of path. The dollar sign indicates a variable and the variable is set a, a one line above at export path above here. And you can say it's basically doing, you can see it's basically doing the same thing. Um, and so what this is saying is add this path to the beginning of the earlier path variable as it was set. So I am augmenting the path variable with my own path. Now, of course, this brings up the question, how did I find this path and how do I know where Python is located? Uh, there are a couple of places where we might find Python. Uh, you may find that it's already set when we, let's say, um, say which Python, that will give us a path as well. And I probably should have mentioned that earlier. You don't necessarily need to start a Python program and ask for sysexecutable. You can just say which Python. And if it shows you the path, then as I mentioned, your path is already set and it doesn't really matter. But of course, this is a bit of a chicken and egg problem because if your which Python is not set, then you would need to figure out where Python is located. If it's Anaconda, if you've installed Anaconda, usually it will be installed on your home directory and your home directory is usually users and then your name or whatever your computer name is. But it's possible that you don't have Anaconda installed, in which case you'll see a different path. Now, if it turns out that your path to Python is Python 2.7 or 3.6 or 3.7 or something lower than that, and you know you installed another version of Python, then you're going to need to go hunting for that other version of Python and find its correct path. I would say that if you have a version, a three version, here, let's, let's see, I've got, I've got my alias says Python 2. Yeah, there you go. Um, the two version of Python is at user bin Python, but it, it's usually in one of two locations. It's usually under users, uh, your, your home directory and then Anaconda 3, or if it's not Anaconda, uh, it, may be, um, it may be under library. Uh, and I actually don't have any information right now on some sample paths. So if you're having trouble finding the correct version of Python, the one that you want to use, um, the one that is 3, 8 or greater, and if you install Anaconda to find it under Anaconda, then you should please just get in touch and let me know and we'll find it together. But once you do have that path, you will add it to your, uh, your, your config file, ZSHRC or bash profile, uh, as the last mention of the path environment variable in which you say that it's equal to the path to Python followed by anything else that was set for path previously. And that is how we set it on the Mac. You can go ahead and, or on Linux, you can save it, close it, and then after you've completed your work, if you weren't able to see it before, you should be able to see say which Python and see the correct version of Python. And just let me know if you have any issues.